the daughter is a mass killer. Damn, let's see. Babe, what did they tell you? Nothing. Okay. She was light flight in here. Yeah. What kind of killer? Is she gonna make King Von blush? Like. This is Natalie and John Shirilla, the parents of Mackenzie Shirilla. Just hours earlier, they were informed their daughter was involved in a devastating car accident and that she was transported by helicopter to the nearest hospital. However, what they're about to hear from this officer would change the course of their and Mackenzie's life forever. Okay. No. Dang. You want to sit down? Dang. What, what, was she just drinking and driving? Is that it? I said, is that it? She killed someone, but does that make her a mass killer? There has been more to it. They say this. Progress in Alameda, car into a building. Two are deceased in the vehicle. Daughter's driving. Damn. Damn. Who died? Damn. Mackenzie's boyfriend, Dom Russo, as well as their friend Davion, were pronounced dead after the crash, making Mackenzie the suspect of a potential double murder. Damn. However, police had their doubts. Most assumed that this was simply the result of a tragic accident on Mackenzie's behalf. But as the investigation would progress, dark and disturbing secrets would reveal this was clearly the much- The ex-boyfriend snitching? Bro, I need some tea. More than just Give me an some accident. cheese, man. Dom, if you do not open, like, I'm, you think I'm joking. What do you mean? You know it, that's exactly what I mean. You're gonna come open this door right now, or there's gonna be a serious problem. Who the fuck she thinks she is? Mob boss over here. Mob ties Kinsey over here. What the fuck? This is crazy. The, the kettle is hot. Around 1 a.m. on July 31st, 2022, Mackenzie, Dominic, and Davion were at a house party in their local town. They decided to let loose during this party and get extremely high on marijuana throughout the night, something huh. Mackenzie had a regular tendency of doing. At roughly 2 a.m., Mackenzie approached the host of the party, Kelly, and asked if she wanted to take acid with her and Davion. This was a strange confrontation for Mackenzie since Kelly had never even heard her talk about acid, let alone what? use it. Kelly denied the offer, and How Mackenzie, and Dominic, and Davion left the party shortly after. Dominic then drove them to another friend's house, where they just relaxed and watched South Park for the rest of the night. Everything was normal. It seemed like Chill. a regular night out for some college kids. And yeah. at precisely 5 a.m., the group left and went to drive back home. Here, Dominic's friend Davion asked if he could get a ride home. But Mackenzie insisted they were in a rush and couldn't. What are you However, smoking on? What is that, man? What is that? Hmm? Hmm? Got some explaining to do. What is that? Hmm? Dominic told Mackenzie to relax <laughs> and let Davion hop in the back of the car. A decision that would forever seal their fate. Damn. The drive started out as normal, and both Dominic and Davion. Well, the story. Don't let women drive. <laughs> goes in and out during the ride. However, suddenly, Mackenzie takes a different route. One that leads completely opposite of Davion's house. One that, just a few days earlier, she spent hours circling around. And without any hesitation, she stepped on the gas. Going over 90 miles per hour, Mackenzie flew past street cameras. And just out of the camera's view was a large brick building. And Mackenzie was heading straight towards it. The fuck? Mackenzie miraculously survives the crash, barely but still breathing. Why did she do the that? The others were killed instantly. The crash would remain. Why did she do that? The fuck? Unknown for 45 minutes until a local Samaritan spotted the wreckage no and called Strongsville police, who quickly reported to the scene. This footage has been given exclusively to Dr. Insanity by Strongsville police. Viewer discretion is advised. No one's breathing. Bust that window out. Alright. Who can hear my voice? Who's in here? Drivers. What the fuck? How are they sitting there? Oh shit, man. Hey. This is bad, guys. We, she's alive. We gotta get her out here. Somehow. All right. And when the cop goes, oh shit, man. You know it's bad. Let me see your knife. Bad. Let's cut this thing out. It's probably like a. Uh,
a mixture of some punch with the cut of vegetables and shit. That's probably what it looks like back there. Not vegetables. Fruit! <laughs> Sarge, we're good to try to get her out. Dude, I don't know what's going on there. Let's see if we can get some IDs, guys. Damn. You look younger. Oh, yeah, they're all pretty young. Jesus Christ. Like this is the worst I've ever seen. I don't feel anything. I don't feel pulse. She's breathing. I saw her stomach. Her stomach's cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We got two that are gone. Yeah. When police realized Mackenzie somehow survived this wreck, they got seen, medics and firefighters on the Twitter. scene immediately to try and keep her alive. Yep. I'm either she's drunk or high, or she just isn't from here, was going way too fast, and didn't know where the road ended. It looks like they even went off the road up there. They did. The but I mean, they were, I mean, if you're hitting a building that hard, I just can't believe all the people that work up here that are up here all night long, no one heard. They're in factory type settings. So. Yeah, well. And it's dark over there. That's insane though. So they've been Once sitting they there for out, I'll go since over to this night? Building, I think there's a camera on the front of that building. I don't know if it's working, but I can always ask. Holy As shit. authorities work to save Mackenzie, the man who initially called 911 to report the incident arrives on the scene to give his side of the story. I was the one that called it in. You called it in? Yeah, I saw it. I was coming back from breakfast. Okay. And I pulled up to the corner there. Okay. And we saw appreciate it. you giving us a call. Yeah. Someone so. in it, obviously. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So uh, that's a bummer. I didn't want to. I didn't want to get stuck, and I'm like, I, I don't know what's going on. Right. No, I appreciate you giving us a call. Absolutely appreciate it. They must. Have, they fucking were hitting it, man. Yeah. I mean, obviously. Because right. I saw that at that front end. They definitely hit it hard. Destroyed. Right. All right. Well, what a way to start your Sunday. I guess better than theirs. Huh? <laughs> right. Better than theirs. I appreciate the call, sir. Thank you. Yeah, you're it's right. It's clear the driver was <laughs> recklessly speeding before hitting the building. So police are quick to collect evidence and figure out the names of everyone in that the car and what truly happened leading up to the crash. Grab everything over here. We'll just take it back to the property room. <laughs> yeah, throw it all in there. Anything relevant? Oh, power up one. Two phones. One's dead. Is there anything else over here? Rest in peace, buddy. So sad. He's gonna go verify with the BMB image. But Holy smokes. Dominic for boyfriend. Okay. Okay. How old is Dominic Russo? 17? 19? All right, guys, I'm turning off. I think that's Damn, it. Damn, so dumb. I don't see anything else, you? No. All right. Inside the car, police identified all the suspects and found multiple bags of weed and other marijuana devices in Mackenzie's bag, as well as psilocybin mushrooms. Thankfully, Mushroom. Mackenzie survived uh, after being transported uh, by helicopter to the nearest hospital. Yeah, Her parents uh, were called to inform them of the incident, and they rushed to the hospital. Unfortunately for them, all they knew was that Mackenzie was in an accident, and this officer is going to have to break everything to them. Babe, what did they tell you? So no, she, just okay. and she was life flighted here. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't know that. Okay. No. You want to sit down? Oh my God. Oh my God. Wait, wait, Progress now, Amita. Car into a building. Two are deceased in the vehicle. Daughter's driving. Who died? I don't know who either, but there's one that we don't know. His name's Jacob. Does anyone know Jacob? Dom? No. Scott! What is Tom? Guys, uh, I know, we've been dealing with this. Your daughter's okay. She's talking to us. I talked to her, okay? Your daughter's alive, talk to okay? Her. Your daughter's alive. She was driving for me, okay? Who was that? Jacob and who? I think, what's the name you said? Tom? Uh, might be. Stop. Oh my God. Stop. Oh my what's, God. what's his relation to? You? Wait, wait, wait. Okay, yeah, then Dom was in the car. Stop. Oh my God. Oh my God. <clears throat> what? I, Are you kidding me? It's right now, it's an ongoing investigation. Speed is definitely a factor. Uh, so are drugs. Tom is dead? Tom is Tom dead. Is dead. Is I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Look at me. Is Tom dead? Dead? No way to wait for me, 
can't say anything right now, ma'am. This, 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 this is a serious situation. Don't this is a serious stop, stop that. Stop. This is a serious stop. This is a serious stop. This is serious. Does she know about their third No, I love her. We're going to keep it that way for Okay, she's getting worked on now, okay? Call boss. Hey, um, so she's uh, she's not gonna be up for a, a long time. Stop looking she's at in me. Surgery. Oh God, help me! All right, All right. Uh, I gotta talk to you one more time. Um, just gonna let you know where we stand is a police department, okay? Uh, where we stand today, okay? Full transparency here. There's drugs in the car. She had a bag of mushrooms on her and a scale. Full transparency, guys. I'm sorry, I'm ripping the bandaid off. Okay. Drugs in the car. So she was awake but not awake, so she was in and out of consciousness. She'll be fully extracted from the vehicle. IFD. I know she has a severe leg injury. Um, like I said, she was speaking and she had her seatbelt on. The fact that Mackenzie was wearing her seatbelt while her passengers, Dominic and Davion, were not what? raises questions about her intentions. This detail How did that raise intentions? They just dumbasses, I don't know. Just potential premeditation, as she might have anticipated the crash and taken measures to protect herself, indicating awareness of the impending danger. Yeah, that probably saved her life. 100% oh saved God. her life. Oh my God. She got a seatbelt up. Oh. Uh, I don't believe the others did. When breaking tragic news to the victim's families, police are trained to try and comfort the family as much as possible. Damn, While the Shirillas so are clearly heartbroken, the officer did a good job of calmly explaining the situation and reassuring them that they know their daughter is alive and well. So However, dead, for the family bro. of Dominic's, the task would be much more devastating. And they'll have to tell Dominic's father everything. Keep in mind- Imagine telling your son's dead. And he currently doesn't even know his son was involved in an accident, let alone deceased. Can I take a seat? So, um... You don't know what time it happened there? No, we don't. Right now, what we do know 100% is somebody called it in, somebody passing by at a, a, a around 6.15, 6.30. Called in, what, the car was just smashed somewhere? Yeah, so, so what, it, what it appears that happened is... They were going westbound on Progress from Pearl Road. They went right here in Strongsville. Yeah, in Strongsville. That business that's right at the on Alameda, right where Progress ends. That's dead ends right there. They hit that building. They hit the sign out front, and then they hit the building. Would they fall asleep at the wheel or something? I don't know. We don't know that. We don't know that. Um, so two kids are dead. My son's dead. Another kid's dead. Go and ahead. The girl's in the hospital. She's in surgery right now. Oh my God, Chris. I mean, another family member or a friend or anybody that you might want us to call on your behalf? No. Um, he seems like he don't give a fuck. <laughs> I know everyone deals with this trauma differently. It's probably gonna hit him later. Nightmare. It probably won't even feel real. Like, what? You're telling me my son's dead. I don't even believe you. What? And later, though, it's gonna hit. Somebody called in at 6.30 in the morning? Between 6.15, 6.15, 6.30, 6 30, yeah. Came upon it passing it by. Yeah. Oh my gosh. This is horrible. She was in her car? It was in Mackenzie's car, yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. She's making it, you guys don't know. We, we, right now, we don't know. She's, she's in surgery right now, so we, we don't know. So. A few weeks after the incident, Mackenzie left the hospital and returned to her normal life. She thought everyone concluded the crash was the result of a brutal accident and nothing further. It was even reported Mackenzie and her mother had applied to a Los Angeles modeling agency and had fully moved past the incident. What's even more disturbing is on the Halloween of 2022, Mackenzie went to her first party since the crash. And her Halloween costume? A detailed corpse with fake blood smeared across a detailed corpse. The fuck? It's her mouth. Mackenzie's parents even approved of this morbid outfit and said Mackenzie, quote, deserved some right, fun they, they after- reach it. They reach it now, bro. It's, it's Halloween. The fuck? 
Hey, region. The crash. It almost felt like Mackenzie was yeah, almost trying to let people know fast, the crash though. had malicious intent, she's and she wanted to rub it into the world fast. that she got away with her crimes. But little to her knowledge, detectives were working around the clock to figure out what really happened the night of the crash, and they would find far more than they could have ever expected. But before that, I want to give you guys a solution to some of the crimes in my videos. A way to prevent yourself from getting into dangerous situations with strangers and that's by using Just our sponsor of this video lifeguard hey. the safe key is a key chain alarm yeah i need to like this my video, video. So click I the pay link my the bills. per sos and but let's get back to Mackenzie. Let's get back to, to it. factually solve this case, it's critical for detectives to, to understand exactly what happened leading up to the crash. Luckily for them, so Davion's learn, phone was connected to a safety app called Life360, which allows I friends and that. family of Davion to track where he is at all times. Yo. I just want to show you. Oh no, explain it. So yeah. this is when they were going down Progress Drive, mm -hmm. and then you know how there was like um, tire tracks before it? Like right. on that side yeah, grass. I tried to so that's the grab sign. the wheel from her. That's when it hits the sign. And then that's, that's where down. she curved exactly yeah. right on. Gotcha. Missed those two rocks and went right into the sign, mm -hmm. the side of it. If, but I'm just confused on how the back of the sign was messed up. But she went right into that wall. Right. No, so you can see like the hard braking was right at building. the wall. The and then her high speed after the hard braking was, right. yeah. 90 miles per hour. Wow. So it said it's a recording. Does that play? So, I mean, how no, does so it mean? Or just, just it works, screenshots? It's just a track. Yeah, it's like okay. my parents have me in a circle mm -hmm. so they can see where I go. It just follows you where right. you go. And Davion and, had us in it. Yeah, well, you, can send the, you can send the screenshots right to the email and I'll get them all to yeah. the detective. Okay. So I spoke to friends that were at the party. I wasn't personally there. I thought that they might have been on psychedelics. Mm -hmm. Kenji was the driver and they said that she took a nap. But if you know psychedelic psychedelics, that's like a eight hour to twelve hour like you cannot sleep. Yeah, you cannot sleep. Yeah, you got it. Alright. I you can see the exact time they left the house. I don't know that's my Alright. In addition to this information, <laughs> the car's black box recorded the gas pedal was pressed down to its fullest extent while driving towards the building. Another one of Dominic's friends was connected to Life360 and had a very clear opinion of what he thought this evidence could be interpreted as. To me, right here, if you lot, like looked at the tracks and you guys probably have pictures of them, mm -hmm. it looks like the person in the yeah. front seat. How do you accidentally go 90 miles per hour? Something's not adding up. You either win, fell asleep, and your foot's just locked down on the pedal. Two, you try to kill me, bitch. What the fuck? He tried to turn the wheel because yeah. of the fact they were going to go straight into a wall. Or maybe she and woke it doesn't up say and she heart broke once. Sleep. It was 90 she miles per hour down that whole road. And I also think because of Kenzie's and Dominic's history, that they were fighting. I think Davion went on his phone to distract himself from the fighting. Although they were on drugs, they can also still be fighting with being on drugs. It, it could have just been like a careless mistake. Like I don't think Kenzie, even if she was like at road rage, if she was arguing, I don't think her intention was to kill two people no matter what. However, while this evidence well. is useful and certainly adds suspicion, it doesn't fully reveal Mackenzie's intentions leading up to the crash. Detectives are still uncertain whether or not this was truly an accident or if something much worse was in play. This is when police conduct a series of interviews with Dominic and Mackenzie's closest friends and family to see what their opinions are and if they have any additional evidence to help the case. And they would find much more She's than they crazy. had anticipated. It was on purpose. <laughs> Understand, you're, you're not under arrest. Yeah. You walk out anytime you want. We have approximately 10 questions that we uh, wanted to ask you. And so, how long were you guys in a relationship, you and her? Well, we were we were all friends in a friend group at first. I, uh, I ended up dating her for a little bit, like probably uh, over the summer. I was only dating her for probably like a month and a half or like two months. And then um, me and Dom found that she was like Homie she was cheating on us basically, but it wasn't like anything official, so it, it wasn't no hard feelings. Like with whatever happened, I just kind of was like, after me and Dom found out about that, we had no problems with each other and nothing. But they they kept they were on and off, and I kept on talking to her still while they were on and off because we were all still in the friend group and stuff. So. And then uh, we kind of just like stopped being intimate, you know what I'm saying? And we're just friends. 
So, describe the relationship. He's a homie, what, what was it? What was she like as your girlfriend? Uh, like, I didn't really have much with her relationship-wise because we didn't date that long. But like, friend-wise, like, like she was crazy. Like, our... she like mentally just not all there. I mean... Yeah, I th I don't think she's just mentally all there. Like, I personally feel like she was trying to kill herself in that crash, and she uh failed on doing so. I did Dom's put up with this. Do you know? Um, I've personally been told that she did voodoo on him. She had told people that she's put a spell on him so that he That's just good hair. I don't know. Couldn't break up with her. That she had like grabbed a piece of his hair. Good hair with she had a doll in her room for Dom and that she had literally put a spell on him. Is what she would tell everyone. It's like she truly believed in that kind of stuff. And she also uses the pendulum, I know too, to try to get answers to but she tries to use it now to talk to Dom. Do you think Mackenzie has it in her to drive a car into a wall? I mean, if you're, I feel if you like, guys speculate that she did I mean, it on purpose, do I mean, you think yeah, she I has feel, it in her? I feel like if she thinks that she can just drive the car into the wall and not feel nothing, you know, like I feel like the only reason she survived is because of how small she is. Like, I feel like she got insanely lucky, but at the same time, not lucky to have survived that because it's a, like she killed two people. If that was what she was trying to do, but it's like. I, I kind of feel, I feel like that's what she was trying to do with crush the car into the wall. Next, police Damn. interview Angela Russo, the older brother to Dominic. Ex-boyfriend didn't hold nothing back. He is hurt. He, he, she hurt him. He's trying to play it cool. Nah. <laughs> Angela was one of the closest people to Dom and would give nah. everything police need to know about Dominic and Mackenzie's relationship. You mentioned that uh, anytime Dom would kind of want to break up with her, she kind of would go crazy. Describe crazy, like what kind of crazy? Like there is times where she called Dom and said, if you break up with me, I'm going to word for word. And is that Just tell me that. Uh, uh, fine, do it. Bye. What <laughs> do you think happened? That I think call yeah, your bluff off of what I know and off my assumptions. Dom tried to break up with her multiple times, even in July. I kept not like working out, whatever. They kept making back up. Kenzie's known to be the kind of person that she's like, she's let us know she will never let go of Dom. And if she has to let go of Dom, she will not go on living herself. She's pretty much let that be known. If you're going 94 miles an hour. You don't have a very fast car to begin uh, with. You're stomping that gas for the whole entire time. He's There's like, no nice brake marks on the street at all. Even before the hit, you would think that some type of instinct would kick in and slam on the brakes. But to my knowledge, she went straight into it. To me, it seems like Crazy bitch. they were in a fight. I think that she took it upon herself to purposely crash into that wall. Yeah. I think if that I can't have you, he nobody can. must have been trying to talk her down the whole time. They swerved off to the right at the end and then you got the third wheel in the back seat he's just here like oh shit <laughs> slow down <laughs> i think he might have grabbed the wheel not funny. towards the end of it maybe trying to spin him or something who knows she could have been bear hugging it i don't know they're hitting bumps too they're going 90 you could have not like i don't know what's going through his head you know as more friends and family speak to police, there's a picture building of a toxic relationship that could have ended several times over if it wasn't for Mackenzie's threatening behavior. Mackenzie's actions after the crash were also of concern to police. On August 6th, only a week after the incident, like, police find themselves this? back this at her doorstep after reports of a disturbance where Mackenzie's father makes a shocking confession. Sarge, I want to ask you first about August 6th, if you recall. That's the day you guys were dispatched to Mackenzie Sharilla's yeah. room. Can you tell me about that day? So uh, we were dispatched up to the room for a disturbance. Once we arrived up on the room, she was upset with her dad. We asked the dad to step out and like, we were trying to calm him down, calm him down. And he's like, you know, you guys probably know who I am. At one point in the conversation, he's like, I feel like my daughter needs a psych evaluation. And he's like, you know, because like, you know, she's not, you know, thinking clearly and, and Word for word what he said, like, I, I don't recall every word that he said. He was pretty hysterical, he was pretty upset. She was upset with her dad because, like, she wanted the lady to go to the funerals. Mackenzie got mad because she couldn't go to Dominic's funeral. Even though she's made a shrine dedicated to Dominic, 
posts constantly on his Facebook memorial page and wears his clothing, her dad refuses to let her go. Regardless, with so much evidence against her, police come to the conclusion that this crash had to have been deliberate, and Mackenzie is about to find herself in handcuffs and on her way to the local jail. Where is she? Right back there, pal. Hi, Mackenzie. Step out for me. I'm Detective Hazu. I'm the one who's been investigating the crash. You're under arrest for aggravated murder times two, okay? Nobody's gonna ask you any questions. Nobody's gonna bother you. Can I have your key, please? Could you please be careful taking this one off it. so it doesn't break the bracelet, please? You got it. You got it. Reporting. Mounted. Wi Fi connected. She worried about a bracelet. You're not seeing that bracelet. By at least 40 years, bitch. 20 years, something like that. What's your first name? Mackenzie. Okay, Mackenzie, I'm gonna take your handcuffs off. I need like all the jewelry and everything to come off, okay? I can't wear any of it. No, I need you to take it off. You're in jail right now. What do you think this was? When her parents find out she's been arrested, they head straight for the station and immediately confront and fight with the officers. Man, she's not gonna make it in jail. She's not gonna make it. At all, that's from the lawyer. Are you guys did this on the weekend? Just look. All you do is go, hey, there's a warrant for. We would have brought her right down here with no problem. Unbelievable. I mean, you eighteen. So the warrant was issued today. We would have made a phone call, couldn't you? You had your creeper out in front of my yard watching. Um, get the fuck out my shit, bro. Okay, well, I still need to speak to my daughter, so she understands what her, not to say anything to you guys. Remember, we had to roll out the whole mask to pick up an 18-year-old girl who could hardly walk out of a, out of a hospital visit. Get out of my lobby. Shoot. I don't need your sass. You're acting real sassy right now. She was just brought in. They're going to process her as soon as they get the time for her to make a phone call. She will be able to make a phone call. She's a lawyer. She does have a She lawyer. is 18 mm -hmm. years old and she could speak that. Yeah, but she's a dumb 18 year old that just turned 18. Well, and this guy's going to take advantage of her. She's not allowed to speak to you guys. I'm listen, telling you that. Her attorney her can call us. Don't ask her any questions. She's not allowed to speak. Her parents don't want Mackenzie to talk and demand a lawyer is present. Mackenzie is going to need that lawyer as she's going to have to face the consequences of her actions in a she court died. of law. Yeah, I killed him. Look at her eyes. She got them crazy eyes. She's tried as an adult and decides not to be tried by jury, leaving her fate to a judge. Despite the defense's claims that she lost consciousness, the evidence against her proves this claim was a lie, and the prosecution believes she crashed the car as an easy way out of the relationship. The judge agreed. And I don't think easy way out of the relationship is the correct words. <laughs> easy. And on August 14th, 2023, Mackenzie's fa We're breaking up. That sounds a lot easier to me. Nah, I'm gonna kill two people and go to jail for the rest of my life. What's easier to... Well, what would you choose? Fate was finally sealed. This is the type is of that evidence you can never unsee. You can never forget the visual or audio of this exhibit. It's chilling and tragic. As you review that exhibit, you know that you are watching oncoming deaths of two people, and there is nothing that will stop it. The Exhibit 802 crystallizes the so decision-making of the defendant. She morphs from a responsible driver to literal hell on wheels as she makes her way down the street. The mission was death. Mackenzie alone decided to push the pedal to the floor and demand the ultimate speed of that vehicle to 90 to 100 miles per hour. Mackenzie decided death was the ultimate goal that day. And she alone made that decision for Dominic and Vivian, and she continuously acted in a manner to achieve her purpose. In the early morning hours of July 31st, 2022, her purpose was to kill Dominic Russo and Vivian Flanagan. I mean, her actions were controlled, methodical, deliberate, intentional, and purposeful. This was not reckless driving, this was murder. 
On August 14th, Damn. McKenzie was found guilty Very on well four said. counts of murder, four counts of felonious assault, two counts of aggravated vehicular homicide, one yeah. count of drug possession, and one count of possessing criminal tools. She's facing 15 years to life and is currently being held in the Ohio Reformatory for Women. Her first opportunity for parole will come in October of 2037. Golly. Um, that's crazy, guys. Um, damn. Y'all yeah, know some crazy bitches like that? Usually they all talk. You leave me up and kill myself. She's really about it. She was really about it. Okay, guys. Don't mess with these crazy bitches. This is they might give crazy head, but they crazy in the head. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Don't mess with them. <laughs>